This is Twit. Why would someone reach for Kong? What problem are they trying to solve when they're reaching for Kong? Kong, it's a platform for developers, for enterprise architects to connect, secure, extend their services, but most importantly, to intelligently broker the flow of information between all of these services within the enter- within the organization. Okay, we're moving so, to a world. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, we're moving to a world that's more connected, that's more distributed, right? And so the way we're building software, the way we're bu- building APIs, the way our services are being um, communicating with each other has fundamentally changed in the past ten years, right? And so as we have new emerging ways of building software, we do also have new problems that we have to fix. And so Kong is an attempt to fix most of these problems. And so the and I understand that actually watching ZipRecruiter in particular is like uh, moving an entire like Kubernetes solutions and, and containers. Uh, is that the problem was uh, that originates you know from stuff that was built say ten years ago, um, like ZipRecruiter was? Um, is that you end up with a monolithic code base that all has to be primarily in the same programming language because you can't really mix languages. But once you start breaking out microservices, this could be in Python, that could be in Ruby, this could be in Perl still, uh, you know that sort of thing starts to be able to to work out. So so uh, APIs and RESTful services seem to be the way to go. Uh, and so you're ex- you're also experiencing this kind of growth rate uh, uh, from from your perspective as well, right? That's correct. I mean, the industry has been changing because of three main trends. Uh, the first one is that information is always in motion, is always in flow between one service and another service. You know, with the monolith, we used to have the these large data pools that the monolith was handling. But as we've been decoupling the monolith into different parts, different components, different services, now that information has to fly from one service to another. So there is information that's always in flight. And then, you know, the second trend is that as we are destroying the monolith, we are adopting distributed, decoupled technologies and architectures. And so that fundamentally changes many things that we were used to do, like how do we deploy these systems? How do we protect them? How do we secure them? And how do we connect them? And then the third trend is that we're seeing this happening across tens of thousands of different services. So effectively, we're moving from a place where we have a few moving parts, the monolith, you know, large code bases, large teams working on those code bases, to a place where we have distributed decoupled services, many of them, and the teams as well are becoming decoupled and distributed, like the microservices they're working on. And another thing that's interesting well as well, and maybe you sort of covered this already, but uh, different things want to scale at different rates. I mean, uh, you know, uh, ZipRecruiter had the problem of, you know, everything was on the web servers, uh, including all the extra process, things like that. So if that started getting bogged down, you had to fire up more web servers, even if you don't did need more web services. The um, So uh, by having everything be separately scalable, uh, we can uh, get, get a bigger advantage. Uh, do you agree? Definitely. I mean, one of the biggest advantages is that every team that wants to make a change on the code base doesn't have to redeploy the entire thing all the time, right? We can decouple each specific parts of our domain logic into separate services, and then we can update and scale them independently from each other. So we do have much more isolation between those services. And spe- and because all of these different services are communicating via an interface, via an API, it doesn't really matter how we build them anymore, as long as the API can be easily understood by developers, by those services that are trying to consume it. So we are going to have an explosion of services built in PHP, in Python, in Java, in Go, in uh, in Rust, in pretty much any programming language. And the implementation doesn't matter as long as the API is easy to use, it's very well understood, which quite frankly opens up a new can of worms, right? Because now documentation, the accuracy of that documentation becomes much more important. 